Well, there are a number of problems uh, related to the notion of the self or being a self, um, and I think they're all related, really. But uh, we looked in the, the last talk at the the, the problem of self knowledge, whether that's really something that that, that ever really happens, you know, according to Hume, and it, it's not something that at least directly happens. What Descartes thought, I'm not really clear, um, but. And the question of what, how we're to think of the self. I mean, let's sort of stipulate that we are selves. That that, that means something to be a self. And uh, that may be a rather awkward use of the word self to be a self, but it's it's fairly ordinary in in philosophical uh, discussion. And one of the ways that you can think of a self is that uh, a self is similar to a person, uh, being a person, which is also used in a you know, semi-technical sense in, in, in philosophy. For instance, we may see a distinction here between being a human being on the one hand and being a person on the other, which may seem like a very odd distinction to make, which only really makes sense on, uh, with a certain explanation, in which case I think it makes perfect sense and is an interesting and important distinction, but has to be put into context. If we look at uh, the two lists with which Blackburn begins this chapter, in the very beginning on pages 120 and 121. There, there are two interesting lists. List one, he says, is a, uh, a list of actual things we think about ourselves. And list two is um, a list of possible things to think about ourselves. <coughs> and they're very different sort of uh, characteristics. And, and each one of those is, is a, in his term, is a self-description, something that may or may not be true about him as a human being, as a self, as a person. Uh, the, the first list consists of things like he says, uh, I was once very small. Uh, barring accident or bad luck, I will become old. Uh, the organic material of my body, except my brain, changes roughly every seven years. Think of things about him uh, that are uncontroversial. That we all believe those things about ourselves. That at one point we were very small. That um, if we, unless we have an accident or disease, uh, we will grow old. Um, that you know various sort of common sense things. Let's say that that's a minimalist view of the self, right? The view of the, the the very basic kinds of things that I can assume to be true about about me. List two things that he says we seem to understand but not necessarily believe or let's say is a more expansive or even extravagant view of the self. Things like this, I might have been born at another time and place. I might survive my bodily death and live another kind of life as a spirit. I might have been blessed or cursed with a different body. I might be the reincarnation of some historical personage. I might have to live life again. A, a much more metaphysical, one might say, view of the self. Uh, that is, things that, that may be true, that are possible, we understand how they might be true, but we're not, we don't necessarily believe them. Some of us do, some of us for religious beliefs and you know, other sort of metaphysical beliefs about the self. You know, what kind of thing is the self? What does it mean to be a self? The, the first list, the sort of minimalist list of the characteristics of the self, uh, seem to really apply to ourselves as animals, as members of the species Homo sapiens, as living beings, with no reference to, at least that I can see, anything like a soul or some spirit or even mind that is separable from body. Whereas the second list um, is a very different view of the self, or at least a much more expansive view of the self. And what uh, seems to be suggested by many of those characteristics is that the self is something immaterial and, and moreover not only something immaterial but something that can exist and will exist apart from the body. You know, those are uh, much more difficult sort of things to establish at least on a rational basis than the, the kind of simple truths, seemingly simple truths of, of, of the first list. Um, some people would stick with the first list the things that I, I know to be true about myself. The, the second list is uh, entangles us in f metaphysical difficulties, metaphysical problems. For instance, um, if we are to live on after the deaths of our bodies, what 
really supports that. I mean, apart from religious faith, which is something else. But none of us have ever experienced any kind of consciousness, any kind of conscious being that wasn't supported by a brain and nervous system and functioning body. If we claim that ourselves are the kind of things that will withstand death, uh, then we are talking about we are talking about a kind of self that none of us have ever experienced. Again, that that if you believe in that th through uh, a decision, or I don't know if it's a decision, but if, you, if it's a faith-based belief, then it's something entirely different. But if you are seeking to ground that in a rational way, it's, it takes, it's going to take a lot of argument because no one has ever had such an experience of a, a conscious being that was not also a body. It would be a very, very unusual thing to experience, would it not? That is, either to be such a being or to, in some way or another, experience some other being like that. <coughs> However, um, if we look at, 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 again, going back to the question of uh, knowledge of the self, um, one of the uh, things about the sort of Cartesian, the Descartes view of the self, is the self seems to be something, a simple substance, that is a Descartes dualism is again is the idea that there's physical substance and there's mental substance and mind is a mental substance and it is um, perceived uh, differently than body the things external to the mind um, what kind of thing is the self uh, Blackburn uh, quotes a contemporary of uh, Hume's uh, Thomas Reed on pages 123 and 124 um, and this is an interesting sort of clue about what philosophers think of uh, the, of the word person or the concept of the person this is what Reed says which is a great quote he says a part a part of a person is a manifest absurdity when a man loses his estate his health his strength he is still the same person and has lost nothing of his personality if he has a leg or an arm cut off, he is the same person he was before. The amputated member is no part of this of his person, otherwise it would have a right to part of his estate, well, philosopher's humor, and be liable for a part of his engagements. He would be entitled to a share of his merit and demerit, which is manifestly absurd. A person is something indivisible. My thoughts and actions and feelings change every moment. They have no continued but a successive existence. But that self, or I, to which they belong, is permanent and has the same relation to all the succeeding thoughts, actions, and feelings which I call mine. So, again, going back to the, the last chapter, the, the, the notion that um, the self is something that is a, a, a simple thing, myself, which is distinct from the content of my thoughts and sensations and feelings at any particular moment. That those are continually changing, but the self, that is, the, the self that has those experiences, stays the same. So that mental changes are always happening, physical changes are always happening, but I remain the same person, I remain the same self. Uh, and that self cannot be broken up into parts, it's not that sort of thing, it's an ideal or mental entity. Uh, physical things can always be broken up into parts. But a mind cannot. It's a simple unity. It's, it goes very deep into the history of philosophy. You know, different sort of the way that physical things are composite. They, they're made up of parts, whereas ideal, ideas, and say going back to Plato, are not. And that's why they can be comprehended in a more full way. Well, Reed is thinking of the self like that. The self is something simple. Not simple as opposed to hard. Simple as opposed to complex one thing as opposed to something made up of a bunch of things. That's what the self is, so it cannot be cut up into parts. Now, I mention this because um, that Blackburn does indicate that that view of the self as simple does seem to support some of the characteristics in List too. That is, if something, and he mentions a very old sort of argument in philosophy, going really back to Plato, that if something has no parts, then it is eternal. Because the reason that things are 
mortal or temporary or perishable is because they're made up of parts. They're, they're, they're composite beings, and it's the falling apart of those parts that constitutes the, the, the end of that being. But if something has no parts, if something is absolutely simple, then it could be eternal. So that view of the self as a simple thing, and I think uh, that Blackburn is right about that, uh, supports those notions that the self could survive bodily death, that it could, it could be eternal in some sense, and that it could have a certain life apart from the body.